So the goal of these quick little videos is to help you focus on what's important for the week. So this week, we're going to focus on green algae and land plants in chapter 28. And in this chapter, the main goal is to think about what uh, is important about land plants, why we study them, what we gain from learning about land plants. And then the other thing, which is what I'm really interested in, which is the major themes in the diversification of plants. For some of you, you might, might remember that we talked about innovations as associated with animals when we went through Bio 212, and we talked about increasing movement. Well, now we're going to focus on the phylogeny, and we're going to think about what adaptations or innovations allowed plants to adapt to land, to move to land. And that's going to be the main focus, this tradition, tra transition to life on land. And there's a couple of key ideas behind that transition to life on land. Controlling water loss, surviving that intense sunlight, growing upright in the air, reproducing without water, and using animals to move their seeds. So these are some of the major innovations that you want to focus on and you want to be able to talk about after you're done with um, studying this chapter at the end of the week. You're also going to need to be familiar with some of the organisms that are in each of these major groups. And um, for this, we talk about divisions in plants. We don't talk about phyla. I know it's very confusing, but plants want it to be different, plant people anyway. And so we're going to talk about major innovations that are associated with these different divisions of plants. So you want to think about how uh, you would explain plants transition to land and you want to focus on key adaptations and innovations to life on land. And you want to have some understanding of plants at, in each group and characteristics of each group. You want to think about what early plants look like and that life on land for those early plants were going to be very much more like mosses that we see today. And that transition is going to be really overcoming the fact that they're not bathed in water anymore. There's some cool videos. There's a Nova video I put up there. You don't have to watch it if you don't have the time. It's pretty long, 53 minutes or so. But it talks about um, some information that we have about plants. Now remember, plants are really difficult because there's not a lot of fossil record of it. So there's a big hole in the information that we have about plants just because they aren't preserved very easily. And so this is um, some of the challenges that um, our, our uh, plant biologists face when they're trying to figure out about how the evolution of land happened, uh, evolution, not evolution of land, but evolution of plants happened. So um, we're going to talk about green algae and how important they are this week. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And I uploaded some videos associated with algae and why they're so awesome. Um, and then the importance of land plants. And so we're going to talk a little bit about why they're important. And then um, that's what the book focuses on at the very beginning, all the different things that are important about algae and land plants and why we should care about them. Then we're going to talk a little bit about um, how they were the first multi or multicellular organisms to live with most of their tissues exposed to land as opposed to algae, and that there's these major uh, evolutionary challenges of trying to do efficient reproduction in a situation where their sperm cannot easily swim to the egg. And remember, we talked a little bit about the importance of alternation of generations. Um, so you want to think about what some of the major obstacles or challenges plants had as they face that movement to land. And you want to think about particularly the um, problem of drying out or desiccation. And that's going to be one of the big challenges, but also support transportation of nutrients. Before they were bathed in their nutrients, now they're going to have to get a hold of those nutrients otherwise. Transportation of sperm to egg and herbivory, so things that are eating them. Um, there's a cool video that talks a little bit about how powerful plants are, and they talk about the Carboniferous period and the extensive deposits of coal. Um, so definitely watch that video. It's very cool. It's done by PBS, and um, they do a really great job. Um, you want to familiarize yourself with the phylogeny. That's really important. So I did upload some videos for a review of phylogeny, and if you didn't take 212, you should come chat with me if you feel challenged by those videos. 
I'm happy to upload another video if you need it, or we can have a little uh, jam session, a Zoom jam session on phylogeny if you need help with that. So we can talk about that in the Zoom classroom tomorrow. So it's important that you think about these different important groups and you know where they are on the phylogeny. Um, we're going to start talking about non-vascular plants, so our liverworts, mosses, and hornworts. We'll move to talking about seedless plants, ferns and horsetails, and then seeded plants, which we're going to spend a lot more time talking about because they are, of course, the most diverse. Having seeds was a very important adaptation, so it's something very important to know about. And remember that we're going to talk about algae as being the closest relatives to land plants and that transition from aquatic life to life on a terrestrial environment. So you wanna um, read about that. You wanna understand that it's a paraphyletic group. So that means that um, you're going to have a situation where it's not going to be all the de um, descendants that have that cake, uh, that have these traits like chloroplasts, the double membrane, and chlorophyll A and B. So it's a paraphyletic group um, when we're talking about algae. And um, there's a lot of different types of algae. We talked about secondary endosymbiosis um, and primary endosymbiosis. Um, we're gonna talk about a lot of close relationships that plants have with other organisms that allowed them to adapt on land, particularly their relationship with fungi. So don't forget fungi, we're gonna talk about them next week and we're gonna revisit some of these ideas of lichens and um, mycelial networks, which are really important into the survival of plants today. Um, you should be able to draw and think about all these innovations that are associated with life on land and the transition to life on land from green algae to our bryophytes to our ferns to our gymnosperms and our angiosperms. And we'll go through this phylogeny together. Um, you want to think about some characteristics of moss and what they've overcome. So particularly with respect to their cuticle and also with respect to stomata, both of these things associated with preventing water loss. We're also gonna to start to see this concept of an enclosed embryo. So look through enclosed embryo, make sure that you have some understanding of what an enclosed embryo um, is and why it is important in helping the survival. Remember this allows them to have food um, that is going to be nourishing that embryo. From there, we're gonna go on to talk about the different types of bryophytes. So liverworts, um, you should have some some ideas of some characteristics associated with liverworts. They have these really cool gemma cups um, that we'll talk about. And then we have mosses, which we'll talk a little bit about as well. And we're going to talk about um, particularly mosses when we start to talk about alternation of generations. Hornworts, which is another group you probably haven't, um, haven't um, heard of before or may not have heard of before. And then you want to think about where they fit on this phylogeny in terms of just mosses and these adaptations of um, focusing on avoiding drying out as well as the enclosed embryo. In addition to that, we have some characteristics. Uh, you want to think of characteristics of seed and vascular, vascular plants, as well as challenges that vascular plants, um, what were some of the adaptations that allowed them to overcome um, some of these challenges and move to life on land, and the importance of upright growth. What do they achieve by upright growth? Then um, you want to think a little bit about the origin of vascular tissue and who has vascular tissue on our phylogeny, so be aware of who has vascular tissue and um, familiarize yourself with some of the groups, so that like the lycophyta, which are our club mosses, um, Ciliophyta, which are whisk ferns, and our horsetails, which you probably see a whole lot of them around um, in many gardens, especially we have a ton of them out on the farm, which I'm sure you've pulled up if you ever worked on the farm. And then, of course, our ferns, um, which is going to be the most species risk group. And so you should be familiar with ferns and some of the characteristics that make ferns um, such an interesting group and such a successful group. And as we move up the phylogeny, the last group that we're going to focus on is gymnosperms and angiosperms. They are the most diverse. They are the most important. Seed plants are a monophyletic group. They're going to have two major adaptations, which are going to be seeds, and also their major adaptation is going to be the flower. 
and I'm covering it here, but the flower is going to be the end all to be all of um, what makes gymnosperms, I mean, excuse me, angiosperms so successful. So remember, the flower is going to be that last um, key trait on our phylogeny. So that is going to be what we're going to see is that um, development of a flower. And then this last one, which is not talked about so much, but we will talk about it when I go through this phylogeny with you, either in the Zoom classroom or a video, and that's going to be flowers and fruits at the top of that phylogeny. So that's kind of how you want to work through all this information um, and make sure that you're familiar with this phylogeny and how you would fill it out. Thank you so much. Um, please do contact me if you need anything. Um, also remember that we have some wiggle room with the due dates. I always leave them open for two more days, um, at least until week four. So uh, check in with me if you have any problems and I will see you in the Zoom classroom. Bye-bye.